Hey everyone, Dr. West here. I was going to share this song with you, but it don't seem like it wants to come up. I tell you, I had it ready too. Yes. I mean, that's a good song that's playing, but that's not the one that I wanted. Hope everybody's doing well as we getting ready to start the study. I said, near the cross. Hey, Crystal, Mommy, John, how's everybody doing? Deborah, hey. Well, I thought I was going to share um the song Victory is Mine, and um it's sitting on the screen, but it won't come up. But anyhow, um, I was thinking about <clears throat> I used to be a worship leader back in the day and um that was probably about consistently that was more than 20 years ago but we used to love those older songs you know i know it's a lot of new songs out but you know the kind of songs that make you want to tear down tear down the strongholds of the enemy you remember the songs um enter into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart with my hands uh lifted up Coming into his house, um, worshiping him, calling on in the name of Jesus, or we have the victory. Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, um, victory shall be mine. Um, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory is mine. Anointing, uh, fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. Oh, we welcome you, Lord, into this house. Well, Lord, you already here, but we sing that song sometimes. Welcome. It's your house anyhow, Lord. But Lord, I want you here and I want you, I want you to be over everything that's going on. And you know, I was thinking of those songs and how you gotta have a song down in your spirit because sometimes that song needs to rise up to overflow what the enemy is trying to do in your in your mindset. So I always try to have some songs. Um, down in my spirit. Amen. So I hope everybody is doing well on today. Um, I really um, want to talk um, some tonight about um, the enemy and some of the ways he shows himself um, to us. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your awesomeness on this day. We thank you for your, your, your massive presence in our lives and over everything that we do, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity for us to come and, and dig into the word of God, Lord. We thank you that you shall feed our spirit, Lord God, so that we may be more on fire and equipped uh, to do your will, Lord God. And we want to thank you right now, Lord God, for the studies that have already gone forward, Lord God, and that which you are going to share with us on today, Lord God. We just thank you right now, Lord God, and everyone that's going to come into the study, um, that's in the study right now, and those that will come in, Lord God, bless them richly, Lord God, for taking out the time to come and hear what you have to say, Lord God. And I thank you for allowing me to be your vessel that you can use on this evening in Christ's righteous and loving and holy name. Amen. I have to slow myself down because y'all know I start getting excited when I start talking to the Lord and start talking about the things of the Lord. So, I want to talk about that old, I heard a, a preacher one time say, that old slew foot devil. I don't know if the devil got a slew foot or not, but I know the power that he thinks he has is not the power that God has endowed him with. So, 
we've been talking about we've been talking about spiritual warfare and we're going to continue and I don't know if it'll just be this week or next week. We'll just see what the Lord um, has to say. But it's like every week as I'm studying, he's, you know, bringing a little little more to the forefront. And we want to be obedient and we don't want to rush through the word of God. Um, we just want to see what God is sharing, showing us and sharing with us um, each week. So, again, Satan has a job. And what is Satan's job? Satan's job is to try to, um, is to seek to try to kill and to try to destroy God's people. And he has some power, which is limited, but in the power that he, God has given to him, he's going to utilize that power and try to step into our places and take up God's space. But we cannot allow that to happen. But his job is to try to impact our lives, hey Kathy, in such a way that we, hi Hyacinth, in such a way that we won't um, focus on the things of God. But that's what the adversary's job is, to try to get us off track, to try to get us off kilter, to try to get us off of alignment with the things of God. So guess what? The devil, Satan, his, his imps, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So, but are we doing what we are supposed to do? Are we um, in a, aligning ourselves with the things of God? So when the enemy does rear up his head, he doesn't have any power or he doesn't have enough power to pull us in his direction. And we have to remember that the power that he gave, that he has, is power that God gave him. He was an angel in heaven. And because he became prideful... He was thrown out of heaven. And I was reading in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. And in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, there is an account of the king of Tyre. And the, the, the scripture aligned it um, with how Satan is. You know, the, 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 the kingdom was beautiful and, and God was doing a great thing in the kingdom. But the king became prideful the same thing that happened to satan and so because the king became prideful then what he had was going to be destroyed just like what the enemy had he wasn't the enemy at first he was god's chosen vessel in heaven but he went against the things of god and he puffed himself up and pulled other people alongside of him to make himself and them think that oh my god i'm gonna be bigger than god i'm gonna make myself bigger than the god who has all power and authority i'm gonna make myself bigger than the god who has given me everything that i have and allow me the power that he has but in my mind that's what satan was saying that's what the king of tyre was saying I'm going to do what I want to do. And because I'm doing what I want to do, I'm walking in my pride. And scripture says, pride comes before a fall. So, nothing, nothing new there. So look, both of them had power. They were both intelligent. But they both felt that they were superior to God. To the God of the universe. Our God is the God of the universe. And Satan thinks that he's bigger than God. But if we watch around us sometimes, we will see people who have been elevated, even if they elevated themselves, will think that they got there on their own. And that's an impossibility. But when we become prideful and we think that what we have is because of us and what we're doing is because of us and where we're going is because of us, then we're apt to fall and the fall is never pretty <clears throat> i it 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 pains me when i go into someone's um worship experience as they call it and the worship is about man so it's not even about the lord so it's not true worship they just praising the lord in an exterior way to get excitability from people hey robin <clears throat> but what we have to realize 
That's right, Deborah. God is our commander in chief. And we have to know that it doesn't matter what person takes what position as president of this world. God is yet still the ultimate commander in chief with the ultimate power and the ultimate authority. So it doesn't matter who sits on what high seat for however long they sit there. They don't have ultimate power. But it's we as Christians have to remember and recognize that. Then we won't become obsessed when we see all of this negative stuff in the news and in the media. Because God has asked us, has told us, has required us to pray for those in leadership. Pray for the powers. Pray for those in high places. We have to do that. And I tell you, when we're doing that, we won't be caught up in the things that we see because we'll be praying for those things and we'll be giving those things to God. And so, you know, we have to recognize the enemy and don't give the enemy any credit. The devil has a job. That's right. And his job is to mess up the world. <laughs> and he's, he's doing his job. Just look around us. But are we, as servants of the Most High God, are we doing what we are required to do? Are we calling on the name of the Lord as we should? Are we being a right example in the midst of everything that's going on like we should? And I mentioned a couple of times, <clears throat> this is a, a spiritual battle. But what we have to remember is no matter what we find ourselves in, the victory is already won. So we don't fight for the we don't fight for the victory because it's already been won, but we fight to to that particular thing that God has already worked out for us. So I had some 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 things that I wanted to talk about, and I, I have a lot of scriptures today, um, and I kind of looked at a couple of different versions because you know it's important for us to recognize. Um, the characteristics of of Satan, and let me let me clarify. I don't have a specific flow to this study. It's just on spiritual warfare, and whatever God has given me uh, each week is what I am attempting um, to give to you. And as I said before, no matter what I put on paper, no matter what I study, God always has the power and authority to interject whatever he chooses to interject to um to take away whatever he wants to take away because this study was done for God's word to to go forward amen so i already talked about the enemy was created by god but what we have to remember is the enemy is not equal to god so no matter what power he has, his power can never usurp the power that God has. And um, one of the scriptures that I looked at was Proverbs 16 and 4. Proverbs 16 and 4. And it says, the Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. So think about this. The adversary is doing his job. But there shall come a day when he will be destroyed. And look, people, if we are not in alignment with the things of God, guess what? There shall come a day when we are going to have to stand and give an account. And it's not going to be pretty, the picture that God's going to put back before our faces. So we have to be very careful ourselves in ensuring that we are walking in accordance to the things of God and doing the things that God requires of us. <clears throat> One thing about God, God is truth. God is truth. But we know that everything about the enemy, enemy is opposite, is contrary. So that means if God is truth, then the enemy is what? He's a liar. And we have to be careful because we don't want to align ourselves with the things of the devil. And in John 8 44 John 8 44 it says you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him when he lies he speaks his native language for he is a liar and the father of lies 
So we have, we have an option. We can either align with the things of the devil or Satan, or we can align with the things of God. And what we align with is who we serve. And so if we're not aligning with the things of God, then we are aligning with the things of Satan. And if that is the case, then we will be working in accordance to what the enemy's will is. And we will have to answer for that. And the reason I'm trying to put so much emphasis on this is because a lot of times we're not where we need to be in Christ Jesus. And when these things occur, we find ourselves falling into the midst of it because our alignment is not correct. We have power. We have power. Just like Satan has power. But we have different kinds of power. Our power is in the authority under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and moving in our lives. But Satan has some power. And how do we know that he has some power? Again, I will go back to the book of Job. And let me read that portion today. Let's go into the book of Job, the first chapter. Job, the first chapter. And it's good to reiterate things. So if I repeat scriptures, that's not a bad thing. If you heard that before, that's not a bad thing. So let's read Job 1, verses 8 through 12. And this is talking about Job being tested. And verse 8 says, well, let's go back to verse 6 because it's, we're talking about Job's first test. And it says, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. And then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Think about that thing. Have you considered my servant Annette? Have you considered my servant Deborah? Have you considered my servant Hyacin? Have you considered myself Job? Have you considered my, my servant Swanshine? Have you considered my servant Georgette? And everybody else on here, put your name there. Have you considered my servant and put your name there? There is no one on earth like her. He and she are blameless and upright, and they fear me and they shun ego, evil. Now, you know I'm paraphrasing this, okay, people? So don't be saying I'm adding new scripture. I'm not. I'm just paraphrasing. So does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. That's what he's asking the Lord about. You put your name there. So I'm going to say Annette. Does Annette fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you put a hedge around her? And in her household and everything that she has? Yes, Kathy. Yes, put your name there. You have blessed the works of her hands so that her flocks and her herds are spread throughout the land. That's everything God is telling me to do. The work of the ministry. But stretch out your hand and strike everything she has and she will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord says to Satan about me, very well then, everything she has in her hands but on the person herself, do not lay a finger. So God is saying to Satan, just like he said for Job, you, and I'm, I'm talking to us right now, you think you going through something this tough. You think things are falling out of your hand that God had given you before. You think that people aren't treating you the way that you need to be treated. You think that. But guess what? God is saying, I believe you are strong enough to go to get through this. 
I believe you are strong enough and posture in me that no matter what happens, no matter what I allow, I allow Satan to bring against you, you're going to stand strong. You're not going to curse me. You're not going to die. You're going to be victorious at the end of this thing. It might be tough while you in it. You don't understand is what you're saying. But yes, you do understand. We understand. We should understand when things arise that it's the enemy and when God is allowing it. Now, I'm not talking about if we just ain't did what God told us to do and we get ourselves and die straight, then we can look at ourselves. But God can still work that out and the enemy can still jump in there and do what he need to do. But sometimes what's happening, hey, Crystal, sometimes what's happening is, is, is allowed by God. Sometimes what's happening is by our own actions. And sometimes, unfortunately, some things just happen. Like, if there's an act of nature and a, a hurricane came through and tore up people's houses and all of this stuff, God didn't say that was him. That's just a, a byproduct of what happens in nature. But God can, but God, but Satan will make you think that God did it. And then you start questioning God about why did I lose my house and why did I this and why did I do that? Instead of saying, Lord, how, I don't know why it happened, but it happened. But I do know that I didn't do anything or inflict anything to make a situation here. And so whatever it is, Lord God, I still trust you. See, here's the thing, no matter what it is, no matter whether God allowed it, no matter whether he allowed Satan to do it, no matter whether we created it ourselves, no matter whether it's a natural event that occurred, guess what? God is still able to work us through it. God is still able to process us through it. That's what we have to remember. That's right, Deborah. We're going to go through some things. But we have to stay spiritually focused and equipped so that when these things happen, we're not sitting in the corner having a pity party. You lost your job. Now you're over there crying. But guess what? You lost your job. You're in the corner crying. But you was already crying to everybody that you were sick of the job anyway. And you was ready to leave. And it worked out that you left. Now you're upset because it didn't, you didn't lead the way you thought you was going to lead. We create so many simple, unnecessary situations ourselves. And if we would just go back and look at some of the things we speak out of our mouths and some of the things that we think in our minds. Because see, what we think, God knows. What we speak, God knows. So, and what we speak, the enemy knows. So we have to be careful about what we speak and about what we think. I was um, talking to a young lady today and I'm going to tell you how, how God works. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, about a month ago, I was driving my car. I was by myself and I heard in my spirit, you're going to be taking a road trip by yourself. So I didn't think anything about it um processed on and so this coming weekend i'm supposed to be in virginia and we're going to have a sisters of valor fellowship and i normally take some ladies with me that present on some of the topics so i normally have my team well it worked out that my team is not going with me at the last minute and i'm not even going to say how those things occurred so guess what I'm going to be traveling by myself this weekend. And I was like, Lord, that's what you were saying to me. I didn't ask him about it. It didn't, it didn't really register. But God had already spoke that to me. But today he actually showed me. This is what I was talking about. You were going to go by yourself. And then God said, see, you had already prepared everything. But I don't. They're going to speak at another time, but I don't need them to speak this time. And so God worked it out that people are, that are on the end that I'm going on are already there and prepared to bring forth the words that these other ladies would have brought. So, you know, how we look at a situation, because I could have been distraught saying, oh, my God, I got to go and I got to do everything. But God was like, God had already put it in my spirit. You're going by yourself. 
So I was able to receive that thing on today. I didn't have no opportunity to get upset about anything. I just called a couple of people and asked them to jump right in. And they said, yes, we ready. We got it. We're going to be there. We're going to, we're going to, you know, and God will do that for us. But what if I would have sat back and started having a, a moment talking about, Lord, I don't know why you um, um worked this out for us to go. And now I got to go by myself and, and I got to do all the speaking and, and whatever. But I don't really speak. I just open my mouth and and allow God to say what God wants to say. And I get excited when I hear what God has to say. That's why I like to hear messages that I do. Because sometimes when I'm in it, I don't know what's being said because I'm allowing God to move. But I can go back and I can listen to it. And I was like, hmm, Jesus, that was good stuff. And so we have to make sure that we are postured in the Lord. So however he wants to shift. We won't think it's the the devil. Because I could have been thinking, Lord, devil, you did this to in her space so she could go. And you did that to her so she couldn't go. And then you turned that around and she couldn't go. And then I, I had a, a room reserved for the four of us. And I called to confirm the room today. And the lady said, we don't have no room for you <laughs> under your name. And I'm like, what? And then she's like, well, we don't have anything for the first night. But we got something for the second night. And I got quiet and she said, you okay? I said, you know, I am. And thank you so much. She said, you don't want a room? No, I'm good. So I had already been invited to stay with one of my sisters. And I was like, no, I'm not going to be able to do that because I'm, I'm bringing people with me. And see how God worked that out? Hey, Karen, see how God worked that out and that's what we have to trust God that no matter what it is no matter what it looks like no matter how it feels God already got it worked out there is an end to it there is an end to it Ooh, I feel like I said a lot already okay so I talked about hey Willie just talking about you girl so I talked about um being, um, the Satan was created by God. The Satan has power. However, Satan does not have ultimate power. And nor does he have equal power with God. I already talked about um, how the devil is a liar. And how God despises, the, despises liars. And so, Satan despises truth. God despises liars. And then I was talking about the limited power that Satan has. He does have some power, but his power is limited. And now let's go over to Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians, the sixth chapter. The 10th through the 12th verses. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. And he's talking about the armor of God. And we haven't really got into all the pieces, but we will, but not today. And he said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And he tells us that we have to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes. And that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm so what he's saying is i need you to recognize that the demonic spirit has a hierarchy just like god's kingdom has a hierarchy and even though god is all knowing all doing all being all seeing satan is not and so Satan doesn't have the power to be everywhere like God does. And so therefore he has to have his own structure of his demons and imps to send out into the spiritual realm to try to wreak havoc into our lives. And I don't know if you ever really thought about that. But Satan is definitely on his job and sometimes we are looking at situations we get upset with people when they act out of character and we forget it's not the person it is the spiritual forces that are working on them excuse me and just like there are positive spiritual forces there are negative spiritual forces as well and so we can't get 
caught up in how the person acts, even though it's not right, we can't expend our energy focusing on that. We have to expend our energy asking God to help us to stay strong as we're dealing with that person or dealing and getting through that situation. That's what we need to do. And then also, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. Hey, Tuesday, 14 and 15 says, No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Sorry to hear that you're not feeling well Tuesday. Whose end will be according to their deeds? Look, <clears throat> when you think of a masquerade party, what do you think of? A whole bunch of people showing up, but what do they have? They got their faces covered. And they want you to try to figure out who they are. That's, a, that's the enemy. The enemy is like, hmm, God is light. And if we want to try to get people off kilter, then we need to walk like we have light. So in order for us to walk like we have light, and since we're not God, that means we have to put on a mask which lightens and draws people and try to draw people away from the true light. And that's why he talks about wolves in sheep's clothing. That's why he talks about us having the light of the Lord and us shining as we go forward. But we still have to what? We have to pray that God will, as I said last week, that God will give us a spirit of discernment to see what is not right and what is not real and what is not true and what is not noble. We have to ask God to show us those things so the purpose of a masquerade is to deceive you is to deceive us in not putting our focus on the Lord and the things of the Lord so we have to remember the enemy has his hierarchy and he's given them masks for them to go forward into arenas that we will find ourselves. And we have to stay prayed up and in the things of God so that we don't get caught up and drawn away from what the adversary is doing. And the reason is, because think about this, John 10 and 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the thief comes for. But the Lord says, I come that they may have life and that they may have it to the fullest. But if we don't realize that we have fullness of life in the Lord, we can easily be pulled into the things of the enemy. You know, um, the, the song, uh, This Means War. Um, you know, I love that song. Um, I love the words it says, you can't have my family, you can't have my breakthrough, you can't have my increase, you know, you can't have nothing that God has given to me. Even if you try to take it, God's going to give it back to me. And God's going to give me more as I stay in his presence and I stay postured in him. But the enemy has a purpose. But Christ has a purpose in our lives too. The Holy Spirit has a purpose in our lives. God has a purpose over our lives. And we have to know this so that we can stay in alignment. Yes, yes, Karen. That's a great song. When you're going through something, put on that song. War. War. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you right now, Father. Ooh, thank you for your presence, Lord God. Just think about it. When we were dead in our trespasses, we used to walk in accordance to the things of, of the world. 
But now we are supposed to be walking in accordance to the things of God. The things that, hey Vanessa, the things that exalt and lift up the name of Jesus. We're not supposed to walk in the lust of the flesh. We're not supposed to have the desires that we used to have. We're not supposed to have the same mindset. Because we are supposed to now be walking in the Spirit. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly, formerly, that means past, walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Of the Spirit is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them... We too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But look, there's masses out there. Those principalities are out there. And we have to recognize it. But we don't walk in accordance. That's, that's the old man. You know, we ask God um, to forgive us of some things. We ask God to, um, we repent of some things. We um, give those things to God. And God throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. The problem is we play around with the enemy sometimes and we allow ourselves to go back and pick it up. See, God's not going to take you back to something into a situation that he's already delivered you from. That he's already delivered us from. God doesn't work that. Because then we, we would be calling God a liar. God would not be true. And so a lot of times like I said. We're back in what we used to do. Because we haven't focused and postured ourselves on the things of God. I am determined. And I like to say. I, I haven't had a bad um, adult life. But guess what? I've done some things that I had to repent for. I've done some things that I had to ask God to forgive me. I've had to say to the Lord, I know that because of who I am in you, I should have never even been thinking about that particular thing. But I thank God that once I go to his altar and I ask him for forgiveness... And I repent. I'm saying, Lord, I'm not going back there to do that again. But see, when we are still walking in the things of the enemy, it's so much easier to go back to those things. It's so much easier to go back to those things. And every time you go to the things that you used to do, it makes it that much harder to come back and be in right alignment with the Lord. So we have to be very careful on this walk and allow God to protect us as we are going forward so that we are not caught up into the things um, that we used to do. And here's the thing about Satan. He tempted Christ after Christ had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. He found Christ. He went to Christ when Christ was in a weakened uh, physical state. And he will do the same thing for us if we're not mindful. He's going to come. When your health is not well, when you're not feeling good in your body, that's his opportune time to say, mm, let me slide in here. And get up under him and get up under her skin. But Luke 4.13 says, when the devil had finished all the tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Meaning, even when we defeat the enemy for the moment, the enemy's still looking for strongholds on our life. He's still looking for open areas where he can come in. I mentioned one time about the book, He Came to Set the Captives Free, on spiritual warfare. Um, one of the first books that I ever read by Rebecca Brown. Um, and that, in the book, 
she she actually was a warrior and she actually fought in the spiritual realm for people and in the physical realm as the enemy was attacking these people <clears throat> and I remember in the book just when they thought the person was good because of what they'd gone through not too far down the line the enemy got another got in it again because every area in the person's life had not been covered spiritual warfare had not gone over every see, this is why God tells us that we need to be armored up so you know the enemy can attack us in our minds he can attack us with our hands to do things that we're not supposed to he can attack us with our mouth to say things that we shouldn't he can try to attack us with our eyes to see things that we shouldn't he can try to attack us with our bodies to do things with our bodies that we know do not align with the things of God there are so many ways that the adversary tries to get in he'll try to get in our feet and 